Hello students, in today's class we are going to learn about band theory of solids and over here we will be discussing the solid state materials. Now every solid state material is made up of atoms and as we all know atoms are made up of the nucleus which has the protons and the neutrons and it has electrons which are orbiting around it. Today we are going to talk about the electrons which are present around it. So let's first start with the band theory. So in solid states, theoretical model describing the states of electrons in solid materials that can have values of energy. Now always remember there are three states, solids, liquids, and gases. Now all these three states are made up of atoms and atoms have electrons. The energy of electron in the solid is the least. The energy of electron in the liquid increases and gases have the highest level of energy of electrons. That is the reason why all the normal atoms of solid will be in one place. Liquids, they will be a little more spread out. Different electrons, different atoms over here. And gases will have the most amount of energy. And that is the reason why even if you spray a gas in one part of the room, with the help of kinetic energy, it will reach the other part. The behavior of an electron in a solid and hence its energy is related to the behavior of all other particles around it. Always remember solids are tight knit together. The particles are besides each other and that is the reason why because of this the behaviors of one particle depends on the behavior of the other particle. This is in direct contrast to the behavior of electrons in free space where it may have specified energy. Now let's see the allowed energies. What is the range of allowed energies? The ranges of allowed energies of the electrons in a solid are called as allowed bands. Now let's take an atom again. You have a proton and a neutron inside the nucleus. Then you have the orbitals and inside these orbitals you have electrons. Different different orbitals have electrons in it. Now let's take example of the valence electron. Valence electron is the electron which is there in the valence shell. Now this particular electron has different energy bands. Now what are energy bands? Energy bands are nothing but different places or different levels at which this electron can possess energy. Generally this electron because it is in the valence orbital it will be in the valence band. But if you give more energy to it, it can go to another band. So this is what is known as bands. Now there are certain bands which are forbidden for solids because these bands are available for liquids and gases. And that is the reason why those particular atoms and electrons have more energy. The forbidden bands are not for solids because that amount of energy is given by the liquids and the gases. The electrons and atoms of liquids and the gases have more energy and those bands are not for solids. That is, electrons within the solid may not possess these energies. The band theory accounts for many of electrical and thermal properties of solids and forms the basis of the technology of the solid state electronics. Now, there are various electronics over here and depending on what energy level a particular electron can go, that particular metal or that particular solid can be used in electronics. The band of energies permitted in a solid is related to discrete allowed energies, the energy levels of a single isolated atom. Now let's talk about energy levels over here. As I said, there is proton and neutron in the atom and the electron is in the valence shell. Now let's talk about valence band. So generally this particular electron is in the valence shell, so we'll call it valence band over here. And then there is a gap which is known as band gap. And finally we move on to the conduction band over here. 
so there are three things valence band band gap conduction band generally electrons over here have no energy that means these are the energy of the valence band this particular energy has to be risen that means we have to give energy to the electrons over here and the electron has to skip the band gap go to the conduction band and once the electron has enough energy to go to the conduction band this particular atom of this particular metal will start conducting either heat or electricity so if you are giving energy in the form of heat this will start conducting heat if you are giving energy in the form of electricity it will start conducting electricity but this is how it is it starts with the balance band and moves to the conduction band and there is a band gap in the middle when atoms are brought together to form a solid these discrete energy levels are perturbed through quantum mechanical effects and the many electrons in collection of individual atoms occupy a band of levels in the solid known as valence band valence band is the band in which generally electrons are present there are also empty states so empty states in each single atom also broaden into the bands of the level that is normally empty called a conduction band uh, again let's draw it again we have proton neutron into the atom we have electron moving around in the orbit which is right now into the valence band there is a band gap over here now this band gap is generally empty you will not find electrons here and it is not advised for electrons to be here as well then you have conduction band so you have to make sure the electrons have enough energy that they will not be a part of this they will skip the band gap and they will go to the conduction band to conduct electricity at the start the conduction band will be empty the band gap will also be empty only the valence band will have electrons just as electrons at one energy level in an individual atom may transfer to another empty energy level so electrons in the solid may transfer from one energy level to a given band to another in the same band or in another band so now it is very important to understand if we give very less energy this electron will transfer from here to here in the same band but if we give more energy then it can transfer either to band gap or to the conduction band so it is very important to give enough amount of energy if we want electrons to go to the conduction band studies of such changes of energy in solids interacting with photons of light energetic electrons x rays and the like confirm the general validity of the band theory and provide detailed information about allowed and forbidden energies it is very important for us to remember what are allowed energies and forbidden energies for a particular solid a variety of range of allowed and forbidden bands is found in pure elements and alloys now what are pure elements pure elements are nothing but all the particular elements which are found in the periodic table generally over here we are talking about solids and solids in the elemental format we can talk about metals over here so if you have pure gold aurum au silver argentum ag you can have cuprum copper you can have ferrum iron so all of these are nothing but elements but we can also have alloys now what is the definition of alloys alloys is nothing but when one or more metal or metals with non metals they can be one or more when they combine together they form something known as alloys now these alloys can also be examples of solids very good example of alloys is stainless steel something which we all use we can also have brass as one of the alloys bronze as one of the alloys all of these are alloys three distinct groups are usually described as metals insulators and semiconductors now all of these are very important because for metals the band gap is very less so from the valence band to the conduction band 
for metals it can go very easily for insulators the band gap is a lot so if you have valence band over here then the conduction band will be here the band gap is a lot and that is the reason why insulators cannot conduct heat or electricity semiconductors they depend on the external factors so at times semiconductors can be good conductors of heat and electricity at times they cannot be good conductors of heat and electricity it actually depends on what conditions are temperature pressure in metals forbidden bands do not occur in the energy range of the most energetic or most electrons accordingly metals are good electrical conductors always remember generally metals are good electrical conductors they are generally good heat conductors as well let's talk about the insulators as we said again let's draw that proton and neutron over here we have a valence band over here a huge band gap and then you have a conduction band over here so what happens over here is when you have an electron which is revolving around the orbit this electron which is right now in the valence band needs to go to the conduction band but because it has such huge amount of band gap in the middle it will either not be able to go at all or it will require very 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 high amount of energy let's talk about insulators of real life you have plastics plastics are good insulators rubber rubber is again a good insulator you have wood good insulators so all of these are examples of good insulators they have a wide energy gaps that cannot be crossed only by an electron having an energy of several electron volts you have to give a lot of lot of energy because electrons cannot move freely in the presence of an applied voltage insulators are poor conductors semiconductors have relatively narrow forbidden gaps remember the word relatively we are relating it to insulators relatively narrow so it has relatively narrow in terms of insulators relatively broader in terms of metals or conductors which can be crossed by an electron having energy of roughly 1 electron volt and so are intermediate conductors let's talk about the band gap we all know what is band gap now you start with a proton and a neutron you have an electron moving in the orbit you have a valence band over here and then about the valence band you have band gap band gap which is generally very huge for insulators it is mid range for semiconductors and not so much for the conductors on the top you have the conduction band band gap in solid state physics a range of energy levels within given crystal that are impossible for electrons to possess generally a metal will have several band gaps through the band structure in continuum of allowed and forbidden electron energy level so this is the forbidden band over here the particular electron might appear but nothing will happen so it has to go from your to your with large band gaps between core bands and progressively narrower band gaps between the higher bands until no more occur the phenomenon of the band gap occurs when two adjacent allowed bands are not wide enough to span a full range of electron energy levels let's have a look at that so over here you can see this is the momentum this is the energy we start off with the valence band there is conduction band at the top and in the middle this particular portion is known as the band gap so with this we learn about the different bands the band theory of solids we start off with a proton and a neutron we move ahead to the electron the main aim over here is to make sure that this electron we know the energy of this electron with respect to different bands the valence band is the one which is right over here then we have a band gap and finally we have a conduction band thank you so much for watching this video stay tuned for further more videos and subscribe to ekida thank you